Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. This is Dragon 2009 giving you part four of our HTML CSS uh, tutorial. Uh, it's been a while since I visited this, but you know I might as well go ahead and uh, do this because I had a comment on YouTube to go ahead and finish the tutorial, and so I'm gonna go ahead and I guess do that. I didn't think a lot of people was was watching this, so. But anyways, I'll go ahead and finish. Um, well at least I'll do part four, so subsequently do all the rest of the parts. Anyways, if you remember last time, we went and did the uh, navigation here. Hey, let me go ahead and show you that. Uh, we we put the style all these rules here, uh, placing the colors, placing the uh, background c color, like for example that green there, placing a border around there, uh, making the text yellow and everything by following these colors. If you don't know how to do that, just revisit uh, part three of my tutorial, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. But we want to go ahead and move on, and we want to take, let's see, where is it at? We want to take this bit right here, uh, and we want to go ahead and place it uh, below here, as well as taking all of this information, which looks really terrible, uh, and placing it in a nice little sidebar over here, and uh, go ahead and styling this uh, H1 tag uh, in this tutorial. That's what we're going to be doing. And just to show you what, we're, what I'm talking about, uh, this is exactly what I'm trying to achieve. I'm trying to achieve this right here, uh, this H1 tag here, which, by the way, is a font that is not recognized by default on a browser. I'll show you exactly how to get this font. And I'm going to go ahead and place this uh, under nav thing here, as well as um, place some extra rules. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Let's see, the first thing I want to do is, uh, I want to do the, uh, let's do the sidebar first. If you guys remember, I named it right sidebar, and just to kind of recap a little bit here. Uh, right here, as you see, the right sidebar, it's a div, it's an ID, which means it's going to be a hash symbol or number symbol, whatever you want to call it. So that's why I have the number right sidebar because I'm referencing that div tag there, or that ID rather. And I'm going to go ahead, first thing I want to do is I want to position this relative. I want to float it to the right. Why? Because that's where I want it. Uh, there's float left and there's float right. Uh, width, I want to give it a width of 200 pixels. I might change that later, I don't know. We'll find out. Height, uh, I don't know, 300 pixels, I guess. I can always change it later. And that's the beauty thing about uh, CSS is if you don't like something, just go back and change it. Background color. Oh, let's see, RGB. I got to refer to my notes on this one. 175. Oh, I made it simple on myself. Okay. I just put an arbitrary one in there, but you can always change this later. Yeah, I can't remember colors and ha and symbols all that much. Let's see, border. Uh, actually, border left. Mm, one pixel solid black. I might take that out later. It's uh, I don't know. We'll see. Basically, I'm just trying to put just a border to the left so it's a little bit easier on the eye, I guess. But I might take that out. Um, margin left. You want 20 pixels. And I didn't define the other margins. But that's okay, because I don't want to. And this, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and save it. And it's going to look really sloppy, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, but first, I want to save it, and I'm going to reload, and bam, you see how it came out like this? Now, it looks really sloppy. Admittedly, I see that. It's running over things because, it's the, because of the positioning of it, um, and it just looks really bad. And you're probably thinking, well, Dragon, or I don't get it. I, I said 300 pixels. I think it's 300. 300 pixels on my height. Why is it going all the way down here? Um, well, to simply answer that question is... Uh, is because I didn't define an overflow rule to this. I'll show you what I mean. 
In order to achieve the result where I have a scroll bar to make it where it is 300 pixels in height, I'm actually confusing the browser right now. Um, it's overriding my 300 height because it's trying to fix all that text in there, you see. Uh, because it's not going to follow my 300 rule unless it has something to, to follow it by. So, let me go ahead and show you. What you do to satisfy the requirement is you put overflow and you would put scroll. What that tells me is I want a scroll bar, like you see here, you know how you get a scroll bar? And I want that there, and then it will satisfy my height requirement. So let me go ahead and save, and you'll see exactly how that worked out. And I'm going to hit reload. Bam. So now it's positioned the way it's supposed to, and it's got the scroll bar here, and it's 300 width, like you see. Uh, but I really don't like 300 width. I'm going to make it 250. Like I said, you can just go ahead and change things. So it's really kind of nice. And I can hit reload. And bam, 250, just like that. Now, it still looks pretty bad, admittedly, uh, because it's pretty blase, boring. Uh, so what I want to do now, and plus it's got that right there, and it's kind of not running into everything like that. And I'm going to go ahead and fix that. Uh, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put some more additional styling rules. So let's go ahead and do that. Again. I'm going to put right sidebar. Uh, and now, this time, instead of the uh, rule for the sidebar itself, we want to define rules within the sidebar uh, to kind of help us make it look more eye appealing. Uh, let's see, the header tag. Let's start with that. Oops, I messed up. H1. There we go. Got to hit it myself. Okay, and I'm going to go to. Give it a font size first. I don't know, 29 pixels, I guess? I, I don't know. Color, red. I think that's what it is on my other sheet. Let's see. Uh, give it a padding bottom, because I don't, I, won't, I don't want it to butt up against my paragraph tags. Let's make it 20 pixels. I can always change that. And uh, text decoration, uh, you know what I know something? I actually, I think what I'll do is I'll put an underline. I think that's pretty eye appealing and catching. And so let's go ahead and, and save that and see what just happened. Reload. As you can see, I have it in red now. Uh, and that goes for all of my, uh, or, I'm sorry, just my H1 tag up there. Uh, next I want to style my H2 tags, which is right here. Excuse me, I didn't mean to hit that. H2 tags. Uh, and put a background color to this and make it even more appealing. So let's go ahead and do that. So, if you guys remember, same thing, right sidebar. Uh, instead, I'm putting H2. And let's go ahead and define things just like I defined up there. Font size. Uh, because it's an H2 tag, I'm going to make it smaller. Oh, by the way, default wise I don't know what the default is for for h2 tags it is smaller than h1 but since I want to have control over the website I want to define my own font I don't want the browser to do it or whatever so that's why I do that in case you're all wondering color uh, well, let's make it green let's just make it something simple here for purpose for demonstration purposes give it a background color and I need to refer to my notes on this one here. Um, oh, I just put yellow. Okay. I thought I had one of those RGB stuffs. And I think that might be it. No, actually, you know what? I'm put a font family. I want to change the font. Uh, that's Again, that's the beauty thing about CSS. You can do whatever you want. Uh, let's go with Comic Sans. I think that's how you spell it. I'll know if it changes. Go ahead, hit save, reload. Ah, indeed, that is how you spell it. Okay, so as you can see, I put that yellow background in there. I changed the color to green, and I changed the font size to I think 20 pixels is what I put, or 20 points. Uh, so starting to look a little bit different, a little bit better, and so I'm starting to like this. 
Uh, what else can I do? Um, let's see. I want to go ahead and change uh, the paragraph tags within this right sidebar. Let's go ahead and do that. Right side bar. Pop paragraph tag. Remember, start with a P. Font size. Uh, 87%. Kind of wonder why I'm putting that uh, because um, I, I don't I don't want the font size to be super huge. Uh, in fact, if I really want to, I could have put about 12 pixels or something. It probably would have been roughly the same thing. Font family and let's pick something I don't know unusual. Uh, let's see. Mm. Helvica. Hopefully I spelled that right. Okay. And let's see what the results that we just had here. I, indeed, I did spell that right. Okay, as you can see, the font changed for the paragraphs, as well as the size uh, change. So that's kind of nice. Um, I might go ahead and, be, this right here, I might actually make that smaller. Let me go ahead and make that 20, I don't know, 6 pixels. Hit reload. There we go. That way it fits nice in line. You know, it does not running over or something. Uh, I like that. Oh, I noticed you guys too. You see why it's it's got padding here? Well, it's got padding here because we define. If you remember, padding left, padding uh, right. Uh, that's why you see that padding. Well, actually, it's right here. See, so you see, I have the padding bottom there, twenty pixels. I did that so the H1 tag, uh, which is up here, doesn't butt against this. And for the ones that are individual like that. You will notice. Uh, where is that? Um, oh, let's see. Where was that? If you notice you got the. Well, actually, just the, the padding twenty pixels should have done it. Let's see. Yeah, I guess it's just because I defined the width and the height. Yeah, that makes sense. So, it's really nice and even. Nothing is butting against anything. Um, nice uniform appearance here. And, of course, you can always come back and change the height, change the widths, whatever you want to do. Just remember, though, that if you do that, you might have to change positioning of things later on. So, that's kind of the catch to all that. So, just kind of know that uh, for future references. Okay, I'm pretty much done with my right sidebar. Let's kind of move on to uh, something else. Um, I guess I'll do this part up here. Uh, so, I named it under nav, I think. Let's say real quick, what did I name it? I named it... Yep, I, I named it under nav. Okay, so now I know where to reference it. Uh, so I'm going to put... Oops, I'm going to put the number symbol. Under nav. And let's go ahead and put some rules to it. Uh, if you guys remember from my uh, final product, I have a uh, yellow background here. I got this nice little font, as well as something to click on here. And it's positioned up here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. Currently, it's in the bottom here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start it. Um, first of all, I want to start with position relative I want to give it some padding why not 10 pixels should do padding 10 pixels all around and because I did define left right bottom and all that uh, since I just wrote padding uh, that means it's padding all around that's 10 pixels to the bottom left right uh, every, it just everywhere so border uh, five pixels solid. No, I'm sorry, not solid. Dashed black. How'd I give that that dashed appearance? If you remember from the uh, final product. All right, background color. Let's see. I gotta refer to my notes, guys. Uh, let's see what I name it. Number E seven. E7, oops. 
E seven D seven two one. Yeah, I can never I can't commit that stuff to memory. I always have to refer to my notes and stuff like that. Okay, text align, we'll put center. Font size. I don't know, sixteen points I guess. I might I might change that later, I'm not sure. And font family. Uh, Arial Black. Uh, however, I'm going to show you guys a trick later on to this. But first, I'm going to put Arial Black just to demonstrate something. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now, I want to be able to place it there. It may or may not do it. I must reload it. We'll find out. Okay. It's off a little bit, guys. And it's covering this. Which is fine, because I want to be able to move this up here anyway. Uh, so how do I achieve that? Very simple. I go back here, and I defined it. On top, neg oops, negative, I don't know, let's go with 30 pixels. This may not work. Uh, still a little bit of gap left. Uh, let's go with negative 36. And let's go ahead and hit save. Reload. Okay. Now it's covering this. Uh, it's covering that. So that's going to be kind of a bit of a problem. However, um, once I can... I, I could fix that right now. Uh, however, once I start styling my image here, as well as um, my heading tag, it should fix it. Um, if it doesn't, then I'll go back in there and reposition the top and left and all that stuff, okay? But for right now, I'm going to leave it the same because I want to see if my theory is correct, okay? Uh, so I know, again, I know it's covering it right now. But again, uh, I think if I uh, do it a certain way that I'm thinking of, that it won't cover it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's test out my theory. Um, let's see. Actually, um, let's see, right sidebar. Actually, it might be because I didn't put a position on here. That might be why, actually, folks. Yes, I think that is. I need to put a position on here. I don't know. I got to guess. 40 pixels. Let me go ahead and save. This might be wrong. Ah, see, there you go. Yeah, I brought it down a bit. Um, 60 pixels. That's what you got to do, guys, whenever you're doing websites. You just got to play around. Uh, that's pretty good, but I want to down just a little bit more. Let's go with 63. Uh, let's find out if that works. Yeah, that's good enough. And that's the thing about CSS, guys. You just got to play around with it, you know, as far as your positioning and things like that. Um, whenever you're in doubt, just put some number in there and just work off of it, like I just did just now. I should have wrote that down or referred to my notes, but oh well. It worked out. Okay, so what I want to do next is I want to do, uh, well, actually, I want to continue with this uh, navigation. Number symbol there. We're almost done with this under nav thing here, folks. But uh, I want to put the anchor text. I want to style them a little bit. Uh, I want to make color red instead of that color blue that you see. I think color red looks nice. Text decoration. Uh, none. Uh, basically, again, what that does, it gets rid of that uh, underline here. I'm going to get rid of that. And, let's see, this should be about it for that. And one more rule, guys, is I want to be able to have a color when I'm hovering over. So you put the anchor tag, like so, and put hover. Background, color, yellow. 
Or, by the way, you can put a color as far as if you're hovering over the text itself. Uh, maybe you want to change that to, I don't know, I just think of a color here. Let's put, um, boy, I don't know, white. It's probably, probably a poor color to pick, but let's go ahead and save it, and we'll see how it works. Reload. Okay, we changed to red. Now, as I hover over it, as you can see, the background changes to yellow, and yeah, white was a pretty, pretty bad color. Uh, let's put um, let's put um, let's put blue, I guess. All right, let's reload. As you can see, it changed that background to a different color shade of yellow, and it, it changes the blue upon hovering. If you notice. It changes blue just like that. So it's kind of nice. Little tricks you can do with CSS. Makes things look a little more eye popping, a little bit better. Um, and let's see. The next thing I want to do is I want to image, uh, I want to align this image as well as change the size of it. And that's really simple um, CSS, really. I want to go with, I named it Lazy Dog. I remember that. width um, 290 pixels and I want to float it to the left uh, if I don't define that browser won't know where to put it and it's just going to throw everything off and the text is going to be wrong so to save that you just put float left and I'll put some padding right um, 10 pixels I guess will work and padding left 10 pixels and that should be good for my image uh, that was pretty simple uh, CSS rule there let's go ahead and save and show you the results and it resized the image and because I hit float left the uh, text is uh, aligning just like it does it's got some padding to it really really nice stuff uh, if the reason why the um, text isn't right here is because if you remember I, I put some padding right here uh, as you can see right here there's some padding here and it moved the text over here uh, so it doesn't butt against the picture that's why padding is really important uh, I'm still having a little problem here so I might have to fix that here pretty soon uh, but for now uh, let's see I guess for now I will do my head h1 tag and before I do that let me go ahead and show you what I mean I don't know if I can find it Okay, you see the dog training tips? If you notice something, it's under a section, but more importantly, it's under this header here. I did that so I can purposely define the H1 tag separate from everything else, so it doesn't define all of my H1 tags. You don't have to do that. That's just something I do. Uh, so I'm, so if I'm, I'm going to start off with header and an H1. So header, H1. That way it knows which one I'm doing. I want to put it to the right, or um, actually no, I'm sorry. I want to position this absolute. There's a reason for that. If I put relative, it's just it's not gonna. It's uh, because relative kind of treats things as blocks. Uh, absolute has like, I don't know. It's not bound by anything. So you'll see what I mean. Margin, I don't want any margin at all. Padding, don't want any. We don't have to define these, I'm just doing it. Uh, font family, though. We'll go ahead, place, comic, I think comic sans is with a capital. Yeah, I think it's with a capital C. I should have really wrote this stuff down. Font size. 
Let's go with 34 points. Color red. Text line is center. Um, and okay, yeah, I don't want to show you guys something what happens without me putting any left or right or anything like that. I'm going to show you. Go ahead, reload. Bam. Now, if you guys notice, oh, by the way, it fixed that too. That's kind of nice. Uh, because I positioned it absolute, it takes no regard for any of the elements on here. That's the difference between absolute and relative. Okay. Um, I want to show you guys what happens if I were to change this to relative. Now, this is completely stupid to do, but for demonstration purposes, and because this is a tutorial, I want to show you exactly what happens. We hit reload. Notice that it placed this on here, but it also bumped this all the way down. It does it because it's relative to this, relative to that, relative to this paragraph tag, or whatever I place it in my HTML file. And I don't want to do that because, again, if you look what happens here, it butts against everything. Uh, so to achieve the result that I want, I want to go ahead and place it in the absolute position. So I want to hit reload. And so that way I'm not having text run against each other um, <clears throat> like you've seen from before. I know it's weird, it's different. Uh, but it works out that way. Now, of course, I don't want it right there. That looks really silly, right? So, of course, I'm going to go ahead and play some left and right and whatever I need to do. So, let's do some guesswork, guys. I know I'm going to do it right. Uh, let's go with 300 pixels just to see where it lands us at. Hit save. Reload. Okay, that's obviously too much. Um, I think it's too much. Let's go with, I think, 220. 220 pixels. Let's see what that does to us. Let's hit save. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going the wrong way. I need to uh, increase it. 460 pixels. Alright, not bad, not bad. I think it looks pretty centered to me. Not a bad guess. And I'm also going to have to put uh, some bottom or top. Doesn't matter. I'm going to put bottom. Uh, just remember, if you were to put top, you need to put a negative number. Um, because if you're trying to move it up, I know this is weird, but if you're trying to move it up from top, you got to put a negative number. Um, if you put bottom, you're trying to move up, you put a positive number. It's the same thing. If I, if I had left here, it would be a negative number. I know that's weird, but this is the way it works. Just take my word for it. Top. Um, I'm sorry, not top. I want bottom. And I'll put oh, 100 pixels. Just to see what happens. Reload. I moved up only a little bit. Hmm. Let's see. What if I made it 200 pixels? Oh, too much. 130? Uh, getting there, getting there. About 145. I'm going to hit reload and almost, let's see, 100 and let's go with 55, folks. I apologize, guys. I should have wrote these numbers down. I'll probably do it in the next tutorial, so I don't have to keep doing this. But as you can see, it worked pretty good right here. Um, it's pretty nice and even. Yeah, it doesn't fall in line with everything. And I'm beginning to like this. It looks pretty nice, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this part of the tutorial right here. Um, so you see how this sidebar looked. Uh, we uh, styled some rules here for this image, as well as this um, header tag here, and this under nav rule here, under navigation uh, div that we did. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video off here. On next video, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and focus more on 
<laughs> See, I kind of messed up here, too. I should have moved this up further. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and place this stuff right here. I want to make sure that it does what it does here. Change the uh, color of this. Uh, this H2 tag here, I want to go ahead and style it. I want to put this nice little green border here just to kind of, you know, throw some pop to the video. Or pop to the uh, web page, rather. Place an image here along with some text. Um, and I might go ahead and style uh, some of this stuff here as well. I think that's what I'll do in my next video. Uh, and then hopefully on the one after that, we'll go ahead and achieve this. Uh, so go ahead and uh, get, uh, go ahead and just do what I did in this tutorial here, if you're following along with me. And hopefully you'll see you on part five. Uh, this is Dragonor 2009 with uh, part four of HTML and CSS. And I'll see you next time.